all the respected doctors present here it's a great pleasure meeting you all i never wanted to be admitted in aims that to in delhi but mr sri was made me get admitted for two hours <laughs> so i'll be able to tell you see i was admitted in aims for two hours without falling without falling sick <laughs> so it's a great pleasure meeting you all it's a privilege to talk to the doctors of aims considered to be the not considered but the best medical college of the country and also one of the best in the world so i would like to at the more at the outset congratulate all of you for being a member of this great prestigious institution and i also invoke the blessings of the lord so that you make this institution still more more service attitude qualitatively quantitatively in all ways it increases it progresses and may you all become instruments of contributing your might and your best for the continuous progress of this institution for the welfare of the people of our country irrespective of caste creed color religion nationality yours is a very noble profession i myself personally consider that the second noblest profession in the world is that of a doctor the noblest being that of a teacher because a teacher comes in contact with minimum 1000 persons and that is a, a snowballing effect and can transform the character of minimum 1000 students i recall at this moment it an incident that happened in porbandar when i was the in charge of porbandar center 13 february 2002 dr apj abdul kalam had come to inaugurate one of the 81 school buildings that we have we had constructed in the whole of gujarat as a part of the earthquake rehabilitation project as you know on 26 january 2001 there was the earthquake and as is the custom of ramkrishna mission immediately from day 1 we started our relief work followed by rehabilitation work and 81 constructed 81 school buildings which were handed over back to the government after reconstructing one of the school buildings was inaugurated by dr apj abdul kalam he was not yet the president of india at that time of course nobody ever expected that he would become the president of india he was a bharat ratna and i had invited him only because of one reason when i heard that he has left drdo only to meet the youth all over the country i thought here is a man who is a real follower of swami vivekananda because swami vivekananda said my face is in the younger generation it is they who work out my plans and programs and here is the person who is who has renounced his power and position for talking for igniting the young minds so i was very much impressed so i invited him and he came on 13 february 2002 and at that time i had told in my welcome address he is not a bharat ratna he is a vishwa ratna and very soon he is going to become great i did not know why i these words came out of my mouth within 4 months he became president of india nobody at that time imagined that he would be the president of india anyway so that time he said 
he talked to 3000 youths he answered their questions interacted with them and then he said i want to give you some examples case examples he said yesterday i was in rajkot i this is tell, telling this in porbandar yesterday i was in rajkot talking to the school students one 12 standard student i asked her what is your ambition she said i want to become a doctor why do you want to become a doctor <coughs> for earning more money she said no and dr kalam said i have great faith in the youths of today of india and i'm great faith that india is going to become a developed country very soon because the reply that she gave a 12 year student girl says i have become a, i want to become a doctor because i want to remove the pain of the people the pain of the people that is the greatness of medical profession so when that that desire comes in your mind i want to remove the pain of the people and it is for this reason primarily that i have become a doctor you don't have to do anything extra immediately you will get peace of mind immediately you will get peace of mind when swami vivekanand came after delivering his historic speech at the world parliament of religions in chicago in on you know that was on 11 september 1893 that was also 911 but because we did not listen to his message of harmony of religions there was another 911 after 108 years and 2001 the trade world trade centers were destroyed because of fanaticism against which swami vivekananda had even warning we must say goodbye to all sorts of fanaticism and we do not only tolerate all religions we accept all religions as equally true and that is the message for the world the sooner it accepts the sooner the peace of mind will the peace the sooner we peace will, the world will come because it's a global village whether you like it or not you are connected it is a global village and so there has to be a global civilization and global civilization will come when we have respect towards all faiths respect towards all people and we have we remove these differences between human human beings and human beings so anyway so he delivered his speech at that time and became so popular that he had to remain for three and a half years there in western countries and then in 1897 he returned to india and then he gave that clarion call just now you heard uttishthata jagrata prapya vara nibodhata arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached and the whole country got awakened and the youths after listening to these speeches and after listening after reading the books based on those speeches lectures from kolobot almora they sacrificed their lives and they got political independence for us but we have to still get real independence and that also swami vivekan has given the blueprint of the youth i will not go into that but i will try to give an incident when he had come to kolkata that time calcutta a young person came and said swamiji i am not having peace of mind i have tried all methods but i am not getting peace of mind then swamiji asked what are you doing at present I am doing whatever my latest guru has told. You know, nowadays they are changing gurus, just as they are changing the mobiles, they are changing the gurus. So whatever my latest guru has told, that is what I am trying to do. What is that? My latest guru has told, close the doors and windows of your room and close the eyes and remove all the thoughts from your mind. Try to make your mind blank, remove the thoughts from your mind. This is what I am practicing from many days, but I am not getting peace of mind. Then Swamiji said, my dear boy, if you want, if you want peace of mind, first of all, open your eyes, not close your eyes and open the doors and windows of your room and see in the neighborhood who is sick, provide medicine to him. See who is poor, provide bread for him. 
try to remove the sufferings of the people of your neighborhood immediately you will get peace of mind guaranteed this is a new method that swami vivekananda has given to the modern man bhagavad gita talks about karma yoga every, every work can be converted into worship but here is another reason for converting work into worship what is that if you try to do good to others then the good comes to you and swami vivekananda says at long last you will understand not now at long last you will understand that the best way to become happy is to see that others are happy and the best way to get to peace of best way to get peace of mind is to pray for others peace of mind why because we are all one it's a holistic universe the modern quantum mechanics has proved it's a holistic universe and our scriptures talk about it ekam sadvi prabhuda vanti sarvam khalu idam brahma if the whole world is permeated by isha vasmidam sarvam yatkinche jagatyam jagat tena taktena bhunjita magrida kasya siddhanam the whole world is permeated by one universal principle and that is why schrodinger says nobel prize physicist consciousness is a singular of which the plural is unknown consciousness is a singular of which the plural is unknown there is no plural it's one universal consciousness and since it is one universal consciousness and since we are instantaneously connected with each other if i hit upon you then tomorrow i am going to get hit upon by somebody if i do a bad action i will get a bad result today or tomorrow or day after and with compound interest mind you not with simple interest this is simple law of karma emanating from the holistic universe concept there is a beautiful book by stephen covey you must have read it seven habits of highly effective people this there he says gives an example a sheep was going and from the other side some light is seen so the captain gives a message on wireless please move your ship by 20 degrees otherwise ship will collide thinking that there is a ship there and from other side the wireless message comes you remove your ship now the captain was very much angry and he again gave them i am the captain of the ship commanding you to move your ship who is at the other end and the reply came sir i am a humble operator of the lighthouse <laughs> If you don't want to change the direction of your ship, I don't mind. I am sitting in the lighthouse. lighthouse. So these are all lighthouse principles. Some, but some people say, I don't believe in the law of karma. Whether you believe it or not, law of karma will act <laughs> because this is lighthouse principle. There are certain lighthouse principles. Whether you believe it or not, the lighthouse principle will act. go to the top most floor of a multi story building in delhi and declare i don't believe in the law of gravitation and jump what happens <laughs> tomorrow your photograph will be in the newspaper this person did not believe in the law of gravitation and yet he fell down and died on the spot it's a lighthouse principle law of gravitation is a lighthouse principle if you fall down you are going to be smashed similarly the law of karma just as law of gravitation is supreme in the physical world similarly the law of karma is supreme in the mental world the best way to get happiness is to give happiness to others the best way to get peace of mind is to pray for others peace of mind and that is why i am telling you the second noblest profession is that of a doctor because you are trying to make others happy you are trying to remove the people's pain just imagine when a person is suffering physically from any disease for him doctor is more important than god he he says aap mere liye bhagwan hai ye aapne suna bhi hoga kabhi kabhi dialogue आप हमारे लिए भगवान है मेरी माँ को बचाना पड़ेगा आपको आप मेरे लिए भगवान है 
So they really believe that God has come in the form of the doctor. So it is a very noble profession in which you are engaged. And the best way to get a peace of mind is to just change the attitude of your mind. What is that? I have become a doctor not for earning money. I have become a doctor for removing the people's pain and try to serve to the best possible extent. I don't want to want you to do extra one minute job. Whatever job you are doing, you do it with a change of attitude. No, I am not doing service. I am not, I am not doing job. I am serving humanity for which I will be getting peace of mind. Of course, the salary will continue to be paid to you. Extra is this peace of mind. When you give a service to give service, give same service you are already giving, make it more qualitatively still enriched and more importantly change the attitude of mind. I am serving not the patient, I am worshipping God in man. This is the mandate given by Swami Vivekananda. Why did he start Ramakrishna mission? He gave a clarion call to the monks. So far, our aim was Atmano Mokshartham. But he was a revolutionary monk. He said, no. Now the modern monks should have the attitude of not Atmano Mokshartham. Atmano Mokshartham Jagat Hitayacha. When so many people are suffering, we cannot be mute spectators. We must serve them. But then, with that, we are not moving away from the ideal of monks of Atmano Moksha. Yes, we want liberation. But how? Liberation can be attained by various methods. The best method is by serving humanity irrespective of caste, creed, color, religion, nationality. So he told his brother, his disciple, go to Haridwar, Kankha, and start serving the Sikh people. You know, the many people, many pilgrims, old people used to come to Kankal, even now they come and there was nobody to look after. They are very old. Sometimes they fall down, nobody to look after them. So these, his two disciples came there and started serving them. They constructed a small hut, will bring them and will look after them and see that they are taken care of. Now, in Kankal, there are so many other monks. Thousands of other monks were staying there. They told these monks of Ramakrishna mission are departing from the tradition of monks. Monks should not touch anybody. Monks should not serve like this. Their only job is to read scriptures, to give lectures, to do meditation. This is very peculiar type of monks. They are serving the patients. They are making a boy bandage and all that, giving injection. What is this? So they outcasted us. You know, there is Bhandara. Sometimes there are Bhandaras. Bhandaras means there is a big fist for the monks. So whenever there will be Bhandara, they will not call the monks of Ramakrishna mission. And they had given us a beautiful name. The name was Bhangi Sadhu. <laughs> Because we are working like scavenger, we are removing the dirt from the patient's body. So we were called Bhangi Sadhu. And we were not invited, but we did not mind. We were following the message of Swami Vivekananda, who gave a clear and call. That so far you had heard the message. Matru Deva Bhava, Pitru Deva Bhava, Acharya Deva Bhava, Atiti Deva Bhava. I am giving some additional mantras which are more important for the modern age. What is that? Daridra Deva Bhava, Rogi Deva Bhava. Worship the God coming in the form of poor. Worship the God coming in the form of the sick. And with that mandate, these two disciples had gone and gradually they started this with a small hut and it went on increasing. Now there is a big indoor hospital there in Kankal. Uh, it has become a full-fledged hospital with multi-disciplines, multi-facilities. But that time it started with a humble beginning. Now what happened? One of the Mahamadaleshwar of 
who had great influence on the community of the monks there, he was sick and he was admitted in a hospital. When he saw with his own eyes the, the service statute with which the monks were serving and the way all the human beings were served, there was a complete change in his outlook. Then he declared, no, these monks of Ramakrishna are doing the right thing. They are not deviating from the path. They are worshipping God in human beings. They are not doing any other secular work. It is also worship. So, he gave a mandate. And from that time onwards, the Ram, monks of Ramakrishna got recognition. So much so, that today, whenever there is any Bhandara, the first two seats are reserved for the monks of Ramakrishna mission and till the monks of Ramakrishna mission come, Bhandara cannot start. That is the whole paradigm shift that has come. Over a period of 125 years, on 1st May 1897, Swami Vivekananda started this Ramakrishna mission. And now we have, from that time begin humble beginning, now we have 265 centers all over the world, 65 abroad, 200 in India, 49 sub-centers, plus 1,200 non-affiliated centers run by our devotees and friends, 14 indoor hospitals, 90 outdoor dispensaries, 60 mobile dispensaries, and sub serving at least one crore of patients per year, and also educational activity institutions, about 2,000 educational institutions where about 2 lakhs of students are studying. Rural and Tribal Development Project is a huge banyan tree. And last year, we had spent 1,000 crores of rupees for all these service activities in Ram Rupeshra Mission. So this is a special path that Swami Vivekananda has chopped out, which is very important for the doctors. Do you want peace of mind? You don't have to do anything. Whatever you are doing, just change the attitude. I am not trying to serve the patient. What I am doing? I am, to, I am trying to worship the God who is present in that patient. That's all. Only change, paradigm shift, change in thought. So Sister Navidita, while introducing the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, which is now available in nine works, previously it was in eight volumes. There she says, Nividita, Sister Nividita, as you know, Miss Margaret Noble, and Swami Vivekananda gave a clarion call to her to start a school here in Calcutta. At that time it was the capital of India, because Swami Vivekananda said, as long as the women of our country are not educated and not developed, the development of the country cannot take place. No bird can fly with only one wing. And so our women should be developed and women development cannot take place without women education. And so he wanted, he started that school for the women. And Miss Margaret Noble, she, he gave a clear and call to Miss Margaret Noble. And he said, very important, very inspiring letter, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice in the past has been the law. It will be alas for ages to come. The earth's best and bravest will have to sacrifice themselves for the good of humanity. The world is burning with misery. Can you sleep? Let us call and call till the sleeping gods awake. Buddhas by the hundreds are necessary with eternal love and pity. Are you ready? Then come and serve the people here in India. And Miss Margaret Noble came to India. She dedicated her whole life for the sake of for the sake of India, for Indian women. And that is why when Swami Vivekan gave her Brahmachari Diksha, he gave her the name Nivedita, the dedicated one. Read the life of Nivedita. So Sister Nivedita writes in the introduction to the complete works of Swami Vivekan. This is the realization which makes Vivekananda the great preacher of karma, not as I was from but as expressing jnana and bhakti, to him the workshop, the laboratory, are as fit since permitting God with men at the door of a temple or the cell of a monk. No difference henceforth between sacred and secular. To work is to worship, to labor is to pray, to renounce is to conquer. A new paradigm shift Swami Vivekan gives for the modern men, which is very important, particularly for the doctor's community. You have got that privilege of serving the humanity. Only just imagine how fortunate we are, 
how privileged you are and people are taking you to be God. They are trying to see God in you. You try to see God in the patients, try to see the divine in them. And what happens? A paradigm shift comes. You get so much of, so much of peace, so much of satisfaction. Yes, I worship God. I am not going to the temple or church or mosque, doesn't matter. But I worship the living God. And Swami Vivekananda says, what type of foolish people we are. He is a living God in the form of poor, in the form of the sick. Living them, not worshipping them, we go to the temple. And we worship the image. But here, there in the image when you worship, you have to do prana pratishtha. But Swamiji says, here already prana pratishtha is there, he is the living human being. Why don't you worship him first? That does not mean we should not go to temple, church or mosque. No. We also have temples. We also have meditation. Meditation is very important for getting peace of mind and for equipping yourself for serving the people more, better. That's okay. So that are needed. But more importantly, worship the God coming in the form of the poor, coming in the form of the diseased. Let us not dig a well by the side of the river. That's what Swamiji said. So that message is very important for the doctors. Another thing is that happiness and peace in everyday life when we are talking about it, happiness, everybody is now going for happiness and peace. In fact, tomorrow I am going to talk about IMT, uh, there in IMT in Ghaziabad, same topic, happiness and peace in everyday life. And when I, whenever I go to America, I gave 30, 35 lectures every time. At least 50% of the lectures are about this topic. Everybody wants happiness and peace. Why? Because they are not getting it. <laughs> they want it, but they are not getting it. You know, happiness industry is the fifth largest industry in the world today. Fifth largest industry in the world today. Soon it will overcome all the automobile industry and everything. Because everybody wants happiness. This happiness industry includes all the various programs going on in the name of meditation, yoga and all the products that are being sold for this one and the seminars and the clinics and all that and yoga clinics all over the world. The revenue that is generated and the turnover. Fifth largest industry is happiness industry. People want happiness. People are not getting peace. We are not getting happiness. Why? Why we are not getting happiness and peace? We are trying so much hard for it. It is because we are searching at a wrong place. An old woman was weeping and some young men said, Why, why are you weeping? Budhiya, tu roti kyo hai? Dekhna, beta, meri sui kho gai. Sui kho gai, dekhna, roti kyo hai? Chal, mein koot deta hum. Usne bhi dhunda, nahi mila. फिर उसको ट्यूबलाइट ले ए कहां खो गई थी बुढ़िया बोले बेटा उधर भीतर कमरे में खो गई थी है और तू यहां बराम बरामदे में देख रही है बेटा वहां अंधेरा है यहां बरामदे में उजाला है इसलिए मैं यहां देख रही हूं इवन इफ यू सर्च फॉर दैट नीडल हंड्रेड्स ऑफ इयर्स यू विल नॉट गेट द नीडल बिकॉज़ इट वाज लॉस्ट इनसाइड एंड यू आर सर्चिंग आउटसाइड दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस the source of infinite joy, infinite happiness, infinite peace is within all of us. And we are searching in the outside. Let us model mobile, let us model car, let us model house. <laughs> we are not getting because it is here. The source is here. Moko kaha tu dhunde bande, main to tere paas mein, khoj hoge to abhi milunga palbar ki talash mein. Kabir says, are kaha dhunde ho, where are you searching for me? I am there, already within. But we are searching outside. But we are not able to realize it. Why? There is the center of consciousness having infinite power, infinite bliss, infinite knowledge. That is the real nature. Our basic nature is that. This is what Swami Vivekan told in the World Parliament Religion in Chicago. He narrated, he quoted the verse from Shweta Shitra Prishad, Shunavantu Vishwe Amrita Saputra, Aye Dhamani Divyani Tastu, Veda Hametam Purusham Mahantam, Aditya Varnam Tamasa Parastat, Tameva Viditva Tibrutimeti, Nanya Pantha Vidataya Vidataya Naya. I have found the ancient one who is beyond all miseries. By knowing him alone, you shall be free from all miseries. 
देन ही टोल्ड माय डियर सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स ऑफ अमेरिका माय डियर सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स ऑफ अमेरिका लेट मी कॉल यू बाय द स्वीट नेम व्हाट इज दैट अमृता से पुत्र ये द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ इमोर्टल ब्लिस होली एंड परफेक्ट बीइंग्स ये डिविनिटीज ऑन डिविनिटीज ऑन सिनर्स इट इज अ सिन टू कॉल अ मैन सो इट इज अ स्टैंडिंग लायबल ऑन ह्यूमन नेचर कम अप अलायंस एंड शेक अप द डिल्यूशन दैट यू आर शीप your soul is immortal spirit is free blessed and eternal ye are not matter ye are not bodies matter is a servant not ye the servant of matter that is the message of strength of happiness of peace that swami began delivered and that is why he became popular they were they were suffering they were suffering from tension they were suffering from misery they were thinking that was sinners and swami began said no you are not sinner who are you you are the children of immortal bliss holy and perfect perfect beings that is a said you are divine you are divine everywhere swami ji used to give that message one day an american lady say swami you are trying to hypnotize us always telling you are divine you are divine you are divine swami ji said immediately replied madam i am not trying to hypnotize you i am trying to dehypnotize you <laughs> because already you are hypnotized i am a sinner i am a sinner i am a sinner i am miserable i am miserable no you are divine that is the first truth you are divine that is the second truth you are divine that is the last truth there is no truth greater than this this is the message of all the religions in the world you are divine you have got infinite potential within try to manifest that divinity and so swami vivekananda gave that sim- that message whole gist of vedanta in his book on raj yoga each soul is potentially divine the goal of human life is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal do this either by work worship psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free this is the whole of religion doctrines dogmas rituals temples churches mosques are but secondary details so this is the goal of human life to manifest the divinity within and what happens infinite happiness infinite joy infinite bliss infinite power unlimited life and that is what we are aspiring for but that we don't have to get already it is there only there is a screen of ignorance that is why kabir says gungat ka pat khol re to he piya milenge katuk vachan mat bol re to he piya milenge remove the screen of ignorance piyatam mane beloved lord you will get but you have to remove the screen of ignorance how to remove the screen of ignorance four methods swami vivekananda says one meditation raj yoga second prayer bhakti yoga the path of loving god the path of praying to god path of meditation is raj yoga and then third is inspirational reading thinking analytical thinking who am i what is the purpose of life why i am born here what do i want to achieve before i die all this thinking that we have lost our thinking process is gone simple living high thinking that was the old method old formula simple living high thinking now modern is high living simple thinking sometimes no thinking <laughs> there is a beautiful zen story a horse was galloping at full speed and somebody asked the person hey where are you going he said ask the horse <laughs> because i am not taking the horse horse is taking me i am not leading the life life is leading me i do not know the purpose of life i ask many youngsters what is the purpose of life purpose of life i will become doctor i'll become engineer it is that okay what is the ultimate aim of life your life i never thought about it <laughs> what is the ultimate aim of life why you come to this earth what do you want to achieve so that the time of death you don't have regrets no time to think about the goal of life only running 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 with the like the horse running where are you going i do not know horse is taking me life is taking me so this purpose of life has to be remembered and the purpose of life is to manifest the divinity infinite power infinite bliss infinite joy that is our birthright how to achieve it four methods i'll give you a formula i am coming to an end because you are all waiting for the other good nice programs only five lastly i will give you formula 555 and 555 because you are doctors you are very busy i can understand how busy you are so 555 every day you are getting 
only 86,400 seconds, 24 hours. Nobody getting less, nobody getting more. 86,400 seconds, within that only we have to play. So what I am asking is about only 1% of your time, 864 seconds, and in the morning, 864 seconds in the evening. 555, five, five, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening. What is 55? Five, 5 minutes of prayer. And best prayer is Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santumya, let all be happy, let all be healthy. So, 5 minutes of prayer, 5 minutes of meditation, 5 minutes of inspirational reading, and these are the three. And evening again, 5 minutes of prayer, 5 minutes of meditation, and 5 minutes of inspirational reading. And whole day, work, work, work. But not work, service, not service, worship. Worship of God in patience. Worship of the divine in patience. By worshiping the divine in the patience, here what we do when we worship the idol, when we worship God, we put sandal paste, we put flowers, Coconut. and we give bhoga. Here what we give to the passion, rogi naran, we give bandage, medicine, instead of the food, we give the medicine, because the rogi narayana, jaisa devta isi puja, shivji ko keval dud dena se chalega, krishna bhagwan ko makkan mishri chahiye, jaise devta isi puja, to daridrayan ko kya dena hai, roti dena hai, rogi narayan ko roti ni dawai, so you are all worshipping rogi narayana, you are very fortunate, you are privileged. So whole day you work, but convert into worship by changing the attitude of mind. This is exactly what we are doing. The monks of Ramakrishna mission, how they are combining the four yogas. In fact, Swami Vivekananda, when he's, uh, Ramakrishna mission's emblem, you must have seen. In the emblem, you will get one serpent, one lotus flower, the waves of water, there is a sun, and inside there is a photograph of a hamsa. And it is written, Tanno Hansa Prachodaya. This is how the Paramatman is achieved. How Paramatman or God is obtained by combining four yogas. What are the four yogas? Kundalini Shakti. The serpent denotes Kundalini Shakti because Kundalini moves from the Muladhar to Sahasra in like a serpent. So, sir, this serpent denotes Kundalini Shakti, Kundalini power which denotes Raj Yoga. Lotus denotes love, that is Bhakti religion of love, Bhakti Yoga. Waves of water are the waves of Karma, Karma Yoga. Sun denotes knowledge, that is Gyan Yoga. And Hansa is equal to Paramans, is equal to Paramatman. This is how the vision of God or this is how the infinite can be obtained. Infinite joy, infinite bliss, infinite happiness, eternal life. That is the source, that the Atman is the source, Paramatman is the source. This is how it can be obtained. How? By combining four yogas. Raj Yoga, meditation, Bhakti Yoga, prayer, Gyan Yoga, inspirational reading and analytical thinking. And fourth is Karma Yoga which is supreme for the modern age, Swami Vivekan said, we will have to work. In fact, he said, work, work, work unto death. I am with you. And when I am gone, my soul will work with you. But you work, work for removing the sufferings of millions of people. So you are very fortunate. You have unknowingly, you have replied, you have complied with the call of Swami Vivekanan of sacrificing your lives for removing the people of millions of people. You are very blessed. And so only just make it little more blessed by changing the attitude of mind and by the formula of 555 in the morning, 555 in the evening, change the attitude of mind. Start, go on worshiping God in man with this new attitude of mind and little bit of prayer, little bit of meditation, little bit of inspiration, reading. 
I invite you all to our Ramakrishna mission here in Delhi and also Gurugram. And when you go to Dwarka Somna for Pilgrimage, Rajkot will come in between. You visit Rajkot also. We have also a medical center. Uh, every center has got less or more of medical facilities. Sometimes mobile medical one, of course, all centers have more or less. But at the same time, some have good hospitals, some have got dispensaries. We have a cerebral palsy center, beautiful cerebral palsy center in a high hospital there in Rajkot. You are all welcome to visit our centers. And at the end, I thank Mr. Srinivas for giving me this opportunity of getting admitted in AIMS without falling sick. Thank you very much.